that are standing in line out in the cold to come in and see this history of their own nation. Uh, it's a very heartening scene. It is a perfect merging of history, filmmaking, feature filmmaking, documentary filmmaking, education. I think it's exciting that the public can attend, that it's free, all of the events, and they're expanding the palette to include educators, teachers, students, even this new media component. You know, I fell in love with nonfiction filmmaking. I fell in love with making historical documentaries. And, you know, that was in my 20s. I'm a man in my 60s now, and I still find it fascinating, and I love it even more. I love to hear young people, old people, middle-aged people who are all like in that room as emerging filmmakers with an idea, with a story they feel they want to tell, which is important, it's got to be out there. You know, that's, that's great for me. That's, for me, that is part of what keeps me so excited about making films. It's been really, really interesting. Um, I went to the Timeless event, and I went to the Women in History filmmaking event, and they've both been fascinating in ways like looking at history and telling stories that haven't been told before. These films are so rich and complex and layered that they have lots of things to tell us. They're not just a, a linear message. Instead, they're an evocation of lost times. And I think those who've come into the theater to watch the films and participate in discussion, uh, to see how engaged they are by what it means to not just look at history, but to actually interpret it and make it. History films are so important because it's it gives you a creative lens to look at yourself, to look at ourselves, to look at our society. Film and history um, is like, like a great gateway for a larger conversation. You you know hit on something that can really grow, and it seems kind of perfect actually to be tied here at the Smithsonian because this is our history. Mm -hmm.